Hey friends, welcome back to part two of our QNAP TS469 Pro. In this video, we're going to be installing the drives and connecting to our network, powering up the unit, and I'll show you different ways to configure this. So, use the, not the black screws, that's for the smaller drives, the two and a halves. So we have four screws here. And basically, you just have to put them in to these four holes. And I'm using a Phillips T1 or Phillips 1, a small little screwdriver set. But you know, if you have a small Phillips screwdriver, that will work fine. So I got the four screws in one, two, three, four. And if you had two and a half, you would put the two and a half screws in. There's four of them that you can use. And basically, we'll just push this right in. It lines up. Keep this lifted all the way in and lock. Let's take this down to the router and plug it in. Okay, so now I have my QNAP up on the shelf in the basement right next to my router. This router is a Netgear WNDR3700. And uh, it has four Ethernet ports in the back, so we're going to connect directly to it. And now we're going to power on this unit. Okay, let's power it on for the first time. see system booting So at this point, we can now configure right from the NAS unit. Well, there's two buttons here. The top one is an enter button. The top one is an enter button and the select button. So we can select by hitting the select button. You could change it to any RAID you would like. So let's change it to RAID 5 because that's what I'm going to use with these four three terabyte desks. Then you hit the top button, select, and then it says yes or no. You can toggle through and say yes hit yes encrypt volume I'm gonna say no because this is used for home use enter button and now it's gonna create the raid 5 right from the NAS now it jumped from 1% all the way to 99% so now it will display your NASA's name and also its IP address. If you press and hold the enter button for two seconds, it will jump to main menu and you can see information about other things on your NAS hardware, including changing your password and checking everything on your disks. Okay, we're back on the computer. I'm using a Mac and I'm using the Chrome browser, but you could use Firefox and Safari. It all depends on what you choose to do. In this step, this is for the people who have an LCD screen. And also you use this when you don't have an LCD screen to configure your RAID. So basically, we're on startqnap.com. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is choose your NAS. I have the 469 Pro. And you hit start. So basically, we did this part. Now we're going to install the firmware. So to install the firmware, certain QNAPs have cloud installation, but we're going to do with local. And what you need to do is you need to download QFinder. QFinder is a way to search your network using this software to find your NAS and its IP address. So now we'll install QFinder on our computer. Follow the prompts until it's all installed. So now we pretty much are done with that. So now let's go to QFinder. 
and here we have QFinder. It's going to search over the network and it will find the NAS. So now we can double click and basically we can log on and our default logon is admin admin and now we'll open up QTS for the first time so now what it's going to do is going to give you a welcome screen and basically we're going to set up in the next video all these different services as well as different stations or apps when you set up your QNAP using the LCD screen on your QNAP you get a IP address assigned to you and as well as a name of your QNAP now you can go in and configuration put in your default username and password and you can change what it was auto signed for you now in my opinion the best way to set up the QNAP is not to use the LCD screen and in fact when you hear the first beep you could just go right to start QNAP.com and set it up a better way because you can customize it before it starts assigning things and do things a little bit different like if you wanted to set it up for business or to set it up for multimedia purposes and I'll show you that now so basically you could change all these things that were auto assigned but let's now reset our QNAP and configure it the way that I think should be configured first beep after first powering on your NAS. Don't touch the LCD and go right to the computer. Now it looks different. It's telling you to set it up. And we'll hit OK. And it'll open up a web page. Now what I like about setting it up this way is that you could choose whether it looks your NAS looks like a business or it looks like if you're using it for your home multimedia. It'll st install certain apps if you choose the multimedia way uh, with the check mark off or it will choose apps that will look more to using this for business. So I like to have this clicked off because I'm going to be using this for home and not for business and I'm going to hit manual setup. Now manual setup, you can choose to name your NAS whatever way you want. So I'm just going to call it QNAP Home. And I'm going to keep the default passwords. I'll show it to you. Default passwords for now. And I'm going to hit Next. And I'm going to set up my time zone. and I'll just leave everything else the same and hit next and I'm gonna use a static IP uh, or you could just use a, a regular IP but I will use static and we'll change the IP there to whatever we want so I'll do 56 just for instance and now I wanted to set it up I'm gonna use it for a Mac so I'm just gonna use the Mac so that you can find it in finder the way that you want to find it whether it's like Windows uh, Finder or Mac or Linux and I'm gonna install all of these apps here or you could just click them off and not install them at all and install install them manually but I'm gonna be using all of these in my demos so I'm gonna keep it as Mac matter of fact I'll keep it as Windows as well in case I use a Windows computer and I'm gonna set up my raid so I'm gonna do raid 5 and I'm gonna hit next and it'll give you a summary page and take note of your IP with the 56 at the end and it will now erase the drives if you had any information on them and it will configure it 
So now it's going to automatically configure it. And I choose to do it this way because I want to use this as a home multimedia. And uh, it just sets it up better, I think, uh, right from the start. And instead of having it all set up when you use the blue LCD. So we'll wait for this to finish. So now we're done when formatting and initializing, and we can go to NAS management. And then basically just log in with your username and password. And like I said, by default, it's admin, admin. Unless you changed it, that's what it'll be. So now you're on the QTS screen and you get your welcome screen. So in the next video, we're going to go over more of the software. I'm going to show you how to put all this on the cloud, uh, access it from mobile apps and from remote locations and all that. And we'll go over a lot of the stations. We'll configure everything. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.